survived a basic, uh, basically a, a purge campaign by the Trump administration. Really? So uh, yes, um, I was campaign. part of that purge. Uh, in, uh, 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 what's that? What does that term mean? A purge campaign? So in June 2020. Uh, the former president's nominee to run the agency that um, grants the money to the Radio Free Asia and Open Technology Fund, the private nonprofit organizations. Mm. Um, the president nominated this guy to run it, and uh, he was not confirmed as required in our government um, for almost two years. So he finally was confirmed in June of 2020. The first thing he did basically is fire the heads of every one of these organizations. So mm -hmm. Radio Free Asia, Radio Free Europe, the Open Technology Fund, Middle East Broadcasting Network, um, Office of Human Broadcasting. I mean, he went through and just decimated everybody. Really? And uh, the great um, news is that uh, the Open Technology Fund and its board of directors sued uh, Michael Pack and his actions, and the courts found that he did not have the authority to do that with regard to the Open Technology Fund. So instead, he starved the fund, and he withheld more than $20 million from the Open Technology Fund over the last year, oh and uh, took the money to redirect to projects that did not have to go through this rigorous due diligence system that we think is necessary, right? Um, yeah. Because I am not a smart person when it comes to technology. I think <laughs> the smartest people in the world should be deciding what technology is most important for this use case, right? Mm. So at the Open Technology Fund, we have an incredibly rigorous um, competition and you know we have an expert council a volunteer advisory council of experts from every related field that volunteer their time to help select the projects that should be funded with limited resources mm -hmm. so with michael pack starving the fund of basically all its money last year otf had to stop projects really 80% of its work had to stop, oh including, God. you know, tools that were used by activists in actual uh, right protests, oh you know, actual active protests, such as in Lebanon or in Hong mm. Kong. I mean, Open Technology Fund as tools are used, obviously, globally, because technology is technology. And with the localization lab, people that are fluent in 200 some languages and dialects can use the technology. Mm. So we, uh, not we, Open Technology Fund supports technologies that are being used on the ground every day by people at risk. Yeah. And when Michael Pack shuts off the money, those projects have to go dark. Mm. So 80% of the projects had to cease during right. that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, fortunately, uh, yeah. OTF has very, very strong uh, bipartisan support in the U.S. Congress, which okay. is virtually unheard of today, right? And the Republicans and Democrats strongly support what the Open Technology Fund does and its importance really to so much of what the U.S. government and like-minded governments, you know, support around the world. And so, you know, in those terrible, terrible months, um, the Congress basically was prepared to resuscitate and set everything right, not just wow. at the Open Technology Fund, but at Radio Free Asia and Radio Free yeah. Europe and yeah. Middle East Broadcasting. So everything is great now. And, okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, going to go further very, very well. And so that's after everything was right, I decided I should try to look for my next mountain to climb. So that's how I landed okay. at Whistleblower Aid. Okay, very well. So I thought, because I thought maybe when you started the story, they had to get rid of all the heads of all these mission, uh, all these companies. I thought that's why they, did. they had to leave Open Tech Fund. But no, it was oh, um, So, you know, it's an interesting, that's an interesting story. Um, I became aware um, over the course of the last year of his confirmation process that uh, Michael Pack 
had a very strong motivation to fire me. Right. And um, I also came to understand that it was a quandary for him because how could he legitimately um, and uncontroversially fire me? Um, I am the only uh, woman of color <laughs> leading any of these organizations. And I've been working in this field for 16 years. So mm. it it was, um, you know, difficult, I would think, for him to fire just me. So he yeah. started, you know, thinking about, this is what I was understanding, firing all the heads so that it wouldn't look like it was targeting really? me. Um, so I went ahead and resigned the weekend before he fired me oh, because wow. I was hoping, you know, it was like it was like a Hail Mary effort to try to save the other entity heads so that they wouldn't have to all be purged yeah. just because he wanted to get rid of me. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, I underestimated his, you know, uh, perfidy. Mm -hmm. So he went ahead and uh, fired everybody the, in something called the Wednesday Night Massacre, including me, but you know, for the Open Technology Fund, both my termination, the board of directors termination, and the termination of my successor, who was the then president of Open Technology Fund, were all reversed. Really? I've been in the world.